Welcome to Fabrica Money. Today we will see an example about creating a user data function. Last week we talked about translitical task flow. And the translitical task flow was using a user data function. But now we need to talk deeper about how to create one, how to create a user data function. This can be specific for the translitical task flow. Or well, this can be generic for many, many different use cases. Let's take a look on how we do it. Here I have a Power BI workspace. I will create my function inside the Power BI workspace. User, and there it is. User data functions. They are still in preview. Let's give a name for our function management comments. This is related to the subject of last week, the translitical task flow. I created a function to manage the comments in a report. Great. This is a user data function. But one function can have multiple functions inside it. There are no different names exactly. One function is a container for multiple functions. We can create multiple functions inside it. That's why I created the name management comments, because it's related to the entire management of comments, not exactly one single task, but the entire management of the comments. First, we need to remind about where we were storing the comments on the last week's example. We were using a SQL database. I was using a comments table in SQL database. This is my comments table. The ID is identity, sales date, and explanation. So what the function needs to receive is the sales date and the explanation. In fact, this in a new record inside the comments table. Before I create a new function inside this container, I need to use the management connections. The connection management in a function, a user data function, is located in the properties of the function. We add connections here. The, these connections mean uh, the sources that the function will access. Sources or targets, it depends on what the function is doing. The point is, we put one connection and this connection will be shared among the multiple functions I create inside the container. And I'll create a connection to my context DB. The alias of the connection became context DB, was left as context DB. I can edit, edit the connection alias. The point is, this alias is how the code will refer to this Connection. Let's create the function, new function. The function itself ends up with a name like hello fam. And I'm working with this function in, let's say, a development environment. The function has a publishing process. So I'm working with it in development and I can publish it to make the function available, available to be called. So we start in this environment with the hello world fabric function. I need to create a function which will insert a record in a fabric database. I can come to edit and we have lots of samples in this way. I don't need to start from the zero. I have many examples which I can insert. And one of them is write one row of data into a table in a SQL database. And there are many others related to data manipulations, lake house, warehouse, types of UDFs. In this case, I will write one row to the SQL data. There it is, this is the template of my function. In fact, I can remove the previous function, can use only the new one. The function has an attribute called connection. This connection attribute is defining how the function will receive the connection. The function is receiving the connection in an argument called SQLDB, but I need to point to the connection which is already configured in the environment, which is called ContactDB. This name of the parameter SQLDB is already present in the code, so I can leave it. 
I can change the name of the function, right? One, two, three, four, the bees, two, generic. Let's include here as add comment. And then I need to define the parameters. I need to define two parameters, which are the date and the comment. These two parameters will be defined as string. Why am I using string for the sales day and not the time or something like that? The function has some kind of bugs with date time. This was identified and Microsoft is handling this at the moment. Let's adjust this variable data. It will contain the two values that we are receiving sales day and comment. Mind that the values, the parameters were marked as something wrong with them. It's because they hadn't been used before. Once I use them for the first time, everything goes okay. The code of the function, the recommended code of the function is using what is called a defensive technique. It checks if the table exists and if the table doesn't exist, it creates it. The, a defensive coding is a good practice, but it depends on the multiple scenario where you would like to use the function. In this case, I'm not planning to use in a so flexible scenario, I will not include this defensive coding technique. The function is establishing the connection and getting an object called cursor. This object is the one used to execute the queries against the SQL database. Then it will execute insert. We have only two values to be inserted. Only two. The table is called comments. And he has defined the values, which are the field sales date and explanation. The cursor execute get a query, which we are sending. In this case, it's an insert. We, and the set of data, the set of values that we are inserting. The course of execute manage the position of the parameters according to the definition of the query. Then it commits the transaction, close and close the connector. I can return a single value if I would like so, comment included. And that's it. The code is basically this, but there is one more detail, because I'm working with dates. In this case, I really need to pass the value of sales day before passing to the course of execute. Let me include here two statements, and I need to import these elements, like pass, for example. I want this import here. It is advising that there are two imports the function is not using. The function is not using login and date time. I can remove date time, but as a matter of an example, I can include the log. I can include, for example, a starting log, login info, and I define a log for my function. I can include many more logs in relation to the code. According the code is executed, I can insert a log for the function. Now let's publish this function. Publish. Okay, we have the function here, add comment. The publishing is still happening. The function had a period, but the publishing is still happening. And the publishing is completed. I can get the function and execute. It asks me for the two parameters. I can provide both parameters. My Monday comment and execute. Comment included. Let's see the result. Let's take a look on the Fabric database. Let's refresh this. And here it is. My Monday comment just inserted by my function inside my Fabric database. Let's get back to my function. This function can be used on the translatical task flow as I exemplified last week, but I can also use from other places. For example, generate invocation code. I could call this function from a custom client application. It's showing an example about how this would be called. Or I can call this function from a notebook. In a notebook, we can use notebook utils. I could be using notebook utils to call the function. 
And very recently, Microsoft included another interesting feature, which is the Functions Hub. Using the Functions Hub, we can locate all the functions in our company environment. The functions are reusable, and usually they can be one department providing a resource to another department. In this way, a Functions Hub to make the discovery of functions inside the company is very useful. Thank you very much for watching and see you next week.